What will you experience at a Knock'em Dead comedy murder mystery show? Suspense, excitement, love, more love, violence. Well, not really. And, of course, some music. Knock'em Dead comedy is the number one murder mystery troupe, entertaining thousands of people for over 20 years. You have a great night or what? Their hilarious murder mystery shows are full of audience interaction from beginning to end that will keep you laughing all night long. Their shows are not to be missed. Knock'em Dead Comedy's murder mystery themes include a mob show, a redneck wedding, a high school reunion, a family reunion with a luau theme, or your own custom show. Johnny, you have a good time tonight or what? I had an awesome time. All right. She had a great time. KDC, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, all right. Fundraisers, private parties, corporate events, restaurants, and more. Contact Knock'em Dead Comedy for your event today. The Knock'em Dead Comedy Radio Show also brought to you by Two Eagles Auto Body. For more than 25 years, Two Eagles Auto Body has been the leader in auto body repairs and customer satisfaction on Long Island. Two Eagles Auto Body handles every type of auto repair from custom applications and restorations to repairs involving insurance claims. So call Two Eagles Auto Body and ask for John Rossi at 516-328-2527. and you are watching Govs Radio. This is where you go if you want to see something or if you want to hear something funny. <laughs> Coming up in just a couple minutes, this is a joke I told. What? What? I'm not on Gov Radio? Call the police. Call my agent. <laughs> How do you say there, people? It's Johnny Brennan, creator of the Jerky Boys, also of Fox TV's Family Guy fame. I just want to let you know you're listening to Tony and Sally on the Knock 'em Dead radio show. They're going to keep knocking them dead, so keep listening, you wacky sons of bitch. Uh, right there. Over and out there, sweet Charlie. <laughs> hey, Tony. You're not funny. And you probably shit yourself a lot and you're no fun to be with and you don't make that much money and you're not going anywhere in show business and I hope you get hit by a bus and (laughs) three and two to Mookie Wilson little roller up along first behind the bag it gets through Buckner here comes Knight and the Mets win Hello, Tony. Mookie Wilson here, 1986 Mets. How you doing? 
Long time no see, man. Hey, man, I miss you guys, man, that knock them dead comedy radio, man. I miss you. I wish I was still up there, man. But I'll wait till it won't a little bit, and hopefully this year things will be a little bit better, man. But when you have, we're talking about comedy, hey, the early years of Mets was a lot to laugh about. You had to make a lot of comedy off those guys. Hey, hope to see you guys during the summer, and uh, hopefully you'll get back on the show, man, at some point in time during the course of the year, all right? All right? Yeah, fine. Contact me, man. All right, Tony. Talk to you later. Everybody, happy Monday! Uh, welcome to the Knock 'em Dead Comedy Show here on Gov's Comedy Club Podcast, the Twitch channel. Please follow the Twitch channel and share the link on all your social media platforms and tell everybody you know about all the great shows here at Governor's Comedy Club Podcast, whether it's the Twitch channel or the YouTube channel. Speaking of the YouTube channel, hope you guys enjoyed uh, live from Governor's Green Room this past Saturday night. We hadn't done one in a long time, but boy, did we make up for lost time. We did two and a half hours. It was a marathon. Uh, but we had Adam Ferrara in here. Adam Ferrara came in. Um, it was it was a cool night. We had a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> it was weird at first. Don and I, uh, you know, we got here and we, were, we weren't sure. I had reached out to Adam during the week and... Um, He's a very, very nice guy, and he's very loyal to governors. So um, he's, you know, I've emailed with him in the past, and he does, he, you know, he, he does write back, and he's, you know, he, he, he doesn't blow us off. <clears throat> so he said he was going to come in and do the show, and we're like, well, you know, we're all excited. We couldn't wait to get here. Um, so uh, I got here nice and early on Saturday. Got here like six o'clock. Uh, you know, we, you know, the show in here wasn't starting until seven thirty. But he said he wanted to come in before he went out and did his set. So I want to make sure we were set up and everything was good to go. I'd rather get get here early and have time to sit instead of coming in late and rushing around. <clears throat> so um, so I'm doing my thing around here. I get all set up. And um, there, you know, I see some comedians are walking around. There was a show in the giggle room. There was, you know, the big room. And Adam comes through and he walks right by, doesn't even look in. And immediately, I'm like, oh, this is bad. He walked by, I think it was three times. It was at least twice he walked past. And at this point, Don had gotten here. And we're just watching this guy walk past, you know. And I think it was three times because one of the times, Don even yelled, hey, Adam. Nothing. I'm like, what? The? We're, we're sitting there. We're saying to each other, oh, he's not coming in. He's not coming in. And that's all we did last week was promote that Adam Ferrara was coming in. <clears throat> it's the whole reason we were coming in, basically. I mean, it, I mean, we we were breathing a little bit, a little bit of a sigh of relief because um, there were some great comedians um, playing in the giggle room, like like Roy George, um, <clears throat> um, some other people. Um, oh boy, uh, another woman named Ferrara, not related to Adam. I forget her first name. Forgive me. <clears throat> um, and. Um, so finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to walk past the green room because the door was open. And I'm just going to, you know, say a quick hello. Let them know that I'm around, you know. <clears throat> so, I, so I just kind of walk past. And there, there's Adam standing. I don't know why he wasn't sitting. He's standing there with a bowl of salad. And he's just eating. He's in there by himself. So I just did a quick. And he's eating. He just goes. And I, so I, I'm just like, uh, Ruthie, thank you, Jules. Yes, Jules was there. Jules was hanging out at the in the giga room the other night. She popped in. That was a lot of fun. 
brought us some French fries. Uh, Ruthie Ferrara. Ferrara. Um, so <clears throat> she was great, by the way. And uh, so, I, yeah, I see Adam. He's eating. He just gave me a quick wave. So I take the opportunity. I'm just like, hey, I'm Tony. We were, we've been emailing. I'm the guy in the studio over here. He goes, yep, just like that. He keeps eating. So I go, all right, I don't want to bother you. I said, I just thought I'd say hi. Uh, hey, Brian Paul. So he just goes, okay. I'm like, oh, man, I blew it. I blew it. I come in here. I tell Don what happened. Don's like, yeah, he's not coming in. I'm like, holy shit. <clears throat> and it almost like it was almost like um like meeting I don't know, it's almost like being cursed out by Santa Claus or something. <laughs> like like Adam Ferrar is known as a nice guy. You know, he's like Joey Cola, you know, they're known as great comedians and just nice guys to talk to. You know, I mean most of the comedians are, but you're really good at blowing, says Andy. You would know, Andy. That's how I get Andy in here on Fridays. My mouth is killing me after all those Fridays. Um, <clears throat> so we're sitting here like, oh, man. So I figure, all right, we'll talk to Roy George. We'll talk to whoever else is, is in there. Um, uh, Ruthie Ferrara. Who, um, I'm okay to talk to, says Jeff. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I'm drawing, drawing a blank who else is in there. Uh, but there were some good comedians. Mike Tanzi was there. And, um, yeah, so we figured, all right, well, we'll just make the best of it and we'll hang out. We'll do our thing. <clears throat> so it's like 726, you know, and we're just about to start. And sure enough, all of a sudden, Adam walks in. He doesn't say anything. He just walks in and he's just he's just like this. He's just kind of looking around the room. <laughs> Brian Paul, I once got cursed out by a priest. I don't know if I want to know that story. So, <clears throat> yeah, he just kind of walks in. So I was just like, hey. And he was all right. So this is where we're going to be. We're like, yeah. He goes, where do you want me to sit? So we point. He goes and sits. And it, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he just, maybe the guy was hungry. And I don't, I mean, I want, I'm not going to say he was grouchy. But I don't know. Maybe he was just trying to get in the zone. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, again, he wasn't a dick or anything. But it just was, we were just getting a vibe like he was, like he didn't want to come in, you know. <clears throat> but he just took a quick look around. Asked where to sit. We sat, you know, we told him where to sit. And he sat right over here. Not this chair. This chair is for Richie Byrne, who, who should be here in about 15 minutes. Richie Byrne is joining us today. Very funny comedian if you don't know him. But you should know him and you probably do know him. Adam Ferrara sat over there. So, yeah, so he sits down. And then he was just, he was great at that point. He was great. Um, dementia? Are you saying, uh, Brian, are you saying that Adam Ferrar has dementia? Um, yeah, he was fantastic, and he did about, he did like seven or eight minutes with us, and then he said he had to go. No problem. We had a you know, good few minutes with him. We were just thrilled that he came in. <clears throat> Off he goes. A minute later, boom, he comes right back in. He's like, oh, I got plenty of time. My, you know, the, the middle hasn't even started. Yet. Oh, okay. He comes in, sits down. Two seconds later, Tim Gage comes in. Oh, the priest had dementia. Oh, you know, I, I once got cursed up by a priest, too, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> um, yeah, so Tim, now it's, we didn't know Gage was here. So if we saw Gage before the show, we would have been like, oh, all right, if Adam doesn't come in, he doesn't come in, we got Gage. Gage is always fun, um, always very generous with his time. I mean, he, you know, he, he stayed for pretty much the whole show. He left for a few minutes to go see Adam, but then, of course, he came back in. Um, one of many times that he's done that, you know. We may as well, you know, say he's a co-host at this point. I mean, he's just just a delight uh, and a treasure. And like, <clears throat> like Richie Byrne, you know, he should be a household name. Tim Gage is fantastic. Yeah, so Adam Ferrara came back. He probably did another 10, 15 minutes with us <clears throat> and then uh, went off and killed it. Big sold out uh, main club. The giggle room was sold out. The parking lot was mobbed. People everywhere, uh, which is what you want to see. Comedians back here. When this place is sold out, it's electric, man. It's electric in the clubs. It's electric even backstage around here. And this room, is. we're fortunate to be right in the main hallway that takes you to all the main stages. We're right outside the green room. So, you know, we see everything from here. Um 
so it really is um, a fun, fun place to be, and we have we have a great time back here. Um, I want to thank Don Sill. He carried it. I mean, it, it, I mean, I've said it a million times. Don Sill is an encyclopedia of comedy. He knows it all. <clears throat> I mean, I know, I know some of Adam Ferrara's material. I know some stuff of what he's done, and I know his some, some of his background. But I mean, but Don just. I mean, you know, so Don was going to kept that going. Um, so, yeah, and he always asks interesting questions. And, uh, yeah, it's I just I do love doing the show with Don. I wish he could do this show every day with me. Um, and Andy, too. I wish Andy was in here every day with me. And uh, But thank you to Jules, who stopped in. That was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know she was here. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, lots of people came in that night. Um, which is why we ended up doing a marathon because, we, you know, Don and I were talking by ourselves for a while, talking to Gage. But then at the end of the night, that's when everybody just started walking in. Um, we did like 90 minutes and we were like, all right, we're going to wrap it up. And all of a sudden people started walking in. Uh, yeah, Tansy and Ruthie and, like I said, and Jules had stopped by and Gage was in and out. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Roy George... I do feel like I'm forgetting somebody, and if I am, I, I apologize. But, yeah, so it was a great a great night. It's on YouTube if you guys haven't seen it. <clears throat> the Adam Ferrara bits. Um, Art Schill, thank you, Jules. Art Schill stopped by. We had some time with him. Very interesting story. Very inspiring story, Art Schill. If you don't know who Art Schill is, he's a local guy um, who makes the rounds at the comedy clubs. But the thing with him, he's 81 years old. And has only been doing comedy <clears throat> uh, for five years. So that that's an inspiration. You know, a guy at 76 years old decided, you know, screw it. I'm still kicking. I'm still here. I can get around. Oh, he's 87? I thought he said 81. So he started comedy at the age of 82? No, I, I don't know. You know what, Andy? You probably know better than me. <clears throat> Either way, he's in his 80s. Um, but he looks like he's 107. Jeff Bosey said that. Bosey, I didn't say that. Pelagino says 187. Thousand, <laughs> 1187. I'm like, well, what the hell? So, uh, very inspirational story about, you know, it's never too late. You know, he, he, he's still doing it. You know, he, he decided to get into it late. Again, never too late, right? And even Teddy Smith, who was on our show a week or so ago, <clears throat> he's in his. He's around my age. He's in his early fifties. Just got his first act, acting gig on a movie called Tomorrow's Today, and um, the Oscars took a look at it. Um, you know, and now he's filming some other movie. Um, <coughs> he is a New York zip code old, <laughs> but no, it's cool. It's cool that you're that age and you're still doing it, right? You know. It, Instead of just giving up and sitting around doing nothing, good for him. So uh, yeah, that was that was an that's an interesting story. That was a lot of fun hanging out with Art Schill uh, and everybody else that showed up that night. So we thank you all for hanging out with us that night. Uh, and again, if you didn't see it, it's on YouTube. <clears throat> the Adam Ferrara parts I am going to isolate and post those separately. Um, I'm going to post part one today. And uh, maybe part two today as well. But definitely part one will be posted later on today. <clears throat> very excited to have Richie Byrne in here. Richie Byrne, um, very funny comedian. Um, also a singer, an actor, writer. Um, yeah, he's got a lot going on. He's a busy man. So uh, I'm excited to have him in here. Uh, but truth be told, he's really coming in here because uh, he has a podcast called Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. It's him and Mark Riccadonna. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> they, and if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. They've done over 100 episodes. Um, but here it goes. We've been fortunate. We just landed them because they stopped doing the show for a while. <clears throat> and they wanted to bring it back. And um, I blew them both at the same time to get them to come do the show in here. So um, today is the second day that we're recording an episode. We're doing that this afternoon. So I just said to Richie, hey, can you come in a little early, do my show? It's the only reason he's coming in. 
<clears throat> just figured, you know, screw it. I got to be there anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so we'll be posting those soon as well. Good stuff. Two very funny guys. Mark Riccadonna, <clears throat> the guy is a headlining, national headlining comedian. Got married, actually, right here on the governor's main stage. Got married there. Um, but, yeah, he... he I, he's one of the hardest working men. He's constant. Every weekend he's performing somewhere in the country. In fact, I think he's hit all 50 states w- doing stand up. Maybe not Alaska and Hawaii, but pretty sure he's done all the mainland. You see, the Jeff Bosey voice gets him every time. I didn't do my Bosey voice. I kept my promise, Bosey. I kept my promise that I would never do the boy, bo- my Bosey voice again. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Rick Adana, he, he so, yeah, he's always doing stand-up. He has, like, 1,800 different podcasts that he's involved in, including the one with Christy Miller that used to be here. <clears throat> Even though she's, it's not here anymore, we still love her and support her. So uh, you can catch him on that. Uh, <laughs> Andy Pajanos is doing Jeff Boatsy right now. Well, that's nice. Send me a picture. Well, uh, second, so- second thought, don't. Um, Rick Adana, he, he acts, he directs, he writes, um, <clears throat> he writes for cartoons. He's, the guy is just everywhere. Uh, all right, I'm a little scared, but I'm going to take this call. Hi, honey. Hi, baby cake. <laughs> Can you come and do my show right now? Like a Jeff Bosey voice. That was not my Jeff Bosey voice. It's a damn near close second. Uh, all right, well, maybe it is, but it's it, it still doesn't make it a Bosey voice. <laughs> but still, you, I, listen, I'll give you carte blanche if you want to go, hey, do you want to come in and hang out with me? And they feel sorry for you because they think you're a delusional, like, mental case. Okay? <laughs> He's like, oh, that's the guy that's hanging out at the bar all the time. Uh, let's let's talk to him for a minute. It's like you feel sorry for him, but if you go ahead and you figure, like, how weak is the wood at the bar that Bosey's holding it up every week? <laughs> well, the bar's still being held up, even though Bosey's not there. Well, I had to use some Elmer's glue because I had to go ahead and I had to venture off to other places. Well, so well the, Elmer, yes. the rumor is, the rumor is that you said, if James asks you to play the main stage, you will make a return. Is that true? That, that, that's true. That's very true. You did actually say that? Yes, I did. All right. All right. Now but, that until I... such, but until such time, I get to hang out here and do one of these. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you right now? Uh, currently, I'm on the 135, making my way to the 495, where I'll sit in traffic forever, making my way to Brooklyn. And I'll go ahead and I'll find my destination, find a corner, touch myself, think about you and Richie Burns. And also, I will finish on the Hershey and Cage banner. What? What, what happened? Wait, what? 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 What, what? what happened? I don't know what you say. What happened? What, where, where we are? Hi. Hi, everybody on Not The Dead Comedy Land. It, uh, it, is that true? I don't know what you're talking about. I, 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 what? What? What happened? You, you know, true or not, you know Hershey's going to have a, he's going to have a conniption right now. Listen, he wakes up in the morning, and if he can't tie his shoe, he's having a conniption. Oh, <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. You know, it's weird. I'm talking to you, and I'm moving my hands as if you can see me as I'm talking to you <laughs> while I'm driving. It's so weird. Well, I don't want to know how you're moving your hand. <laughs> Only Andy will tell later. But other than that, enjoy the show, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling. <laughs> wow. Does he have the banner? Holy shit. I wonder if... Uh, <clears throat> oh, I should have asked you, Jeff, if you're still watching. Um, we showed it on Hershey and the Keys last week. <clears throat> I printed out an 8x10 of the banner. You know, because I have a picture of it. So I just printed out an 8x10, and I have that on the fence out there. <laughs> All right, let me let me see. Since Richie's not here yet, I uh, maybe I'll take this one. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you today? I'm just the ghost of the hell. This is the ghost what? From the hell. The ghost from the where? Hell. 
I, I, I well, you must be it's, under a sheet because I can't understand you, ghost. I said I'm the ghost from the hell, from the, hell. From oh, from the hell. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's not just hell; it's the hell. That's right. <clears throat> wow, what's uh, is it hot down there? Oh no, it's cold down here, and it's hot. It's cold and hot. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> wow. Uh, and what's happening down there in hell today? You are you having a party? Oh no, I'm having a great time down here. I'm having a party. You get like crazy. You party like crazy down there in hell. All right, very nice. Oh, I don't hear any music or anything. No, because I have no music player very much. I have the music down low. That's why. Oh, you have the music down low, so you can make this call. That's right. <clears throat> and you get cell phone service in hell. Yeah, that's right. We do. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. But guess what? What? This is not hell. This is DJ D Love. I don't. Even... DJ D Love. Holy moly. Wow, how are you, DJ D Love? Are you bad, sir? What's going on, bud? <clears throat> uh, same old garbage. How are you, pal? Good, not bad. I got some good news to tell you. I was trying to get I was trying to call you back for you. I had some good news, guys. What kind of good news? I, I'm going to be on the stage this year. You're going to be on stage? Yes, in Jones Beach. At Jones Beach? Yep. Doing what? DJing, actually. You're going to DJ at, at Jones Beach? Yep. Really? Uh, and who who hired you to do this? Don't worry. I got, I got like I said, I have friends that got connections. <clears throat> so, and and what? It's like some kind of dance party? No, it's going to be KTU. It's called KTU um KTU for you. KTU fortieth? Is that what you said? Y- yep. It's going to be sometime in June. <clears throat> oh, so Kate, so the radio station KTU is having a fortieth party, a fortieth anniversary party, and no, you're it's, no, it's, it's, I don't know, they have like a concert and stuff like that. Wow, they have like a concert. <clears throat> wow, that's yeah. fantastic. So, all right, so, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, did you say it was in June? Yeah, sometime in June. All right, keep us updated, and um, <clears throat> and uh, some of us will come, come see you, DJ. Oh, you need to because everybody's gonna see me. Everybody's gonna. And guess what, Tony? That that whole night, I'm gonna be famous. And well, I guess I'm gonna do. I guess I'm gonna do. I'm <clears> taking <throat> over. I'm taking over your show. You're gonna you're gonna take over, and you're gonna do your own show. That's right. Um, because I'm gonna, <clears throat> because that night, I'm gonna have my my cousin's girlfriend. She's making me um banner. She's making me flyers. So all you gotta do is scan my name, and all that goes to my page. Oh, very and nice. Night, Good idea. And that night, I'm going to be famous. <clears throat> That's a great idea. Yeah, put then, flyers, hand then, out the flyers, oh, yeah. All right, and then next year, I'm going on tour. Oh, you're going to go on, yeah, that, I hope you do. That would be cool. That would be, be awesome, too. <clears throat> and then you'll get, so, like, you'll, you'll get, so like, not, you'll so have, like, bare-chested I, men hanging out in the in the front of the the, the audience, and you'll be checking out all the me- hot men. <laughs> no, I can't do that. We know that, Tony. You gonna take Dorian on the road with you when you go on tour? No, I can't take him. I can't take him, but I can take others. I can take. I think my cousin to play that too. Ah, very cool, very cool. And, gets, and if I remember when I get my first paycheck, the big bucks, I'm having me a mansion built. Are you, really, a mansion? Yes, I am. <clears throat> well, well, I hope that comes true for you, pal. Oh, well, you wish. I'm gonna. Oh, believe me, when it gets built, when I, have, when I move in. I say about probably say about a week and a half. You can come, come over, all knock them dead family. You can come over and have a big old party because I'm gonna have steaks, hamburgers, hot dogs, you name it all. Oh, now you're all. talking. And then you have a you have a guest house where I can stay. Nope. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just fucking. I'm just fucking. No, I want to have a couple of people to sleep over. Oh, you're gonna have a sleepover <laughs> like like Michael Jackson used to have sleepover. <clears throat> no, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have rides in the back, like um, go karts and stuff like that. I'm gonna have two. I'm gonna have two go kart rides. I'm gonna have a slick track, a regular track, and then we have a slide, water slide. Oh. Then we have a. Um, I have a Ferris wheel. It's gonna be a big one. Then we have a um, a swing ride. Then we have a big. I'm gonna have a big roller coaster to get you through the wall. So it's gonna be fun. Wow. <clears throat> wow. That, well, that yeah, that sounds uh, sounds like a fun place. Oh, it's gonna be fun. And then I'm gonna have a movie. I'm gonna have a movie place in there too. <clears throat> so everybody wants to watch movies and stuff like that. 
But have you my guess? You guys watch movies? Oh, your own private movie theater? No, it's gonna be for everybody. Ah, <clears throat> uh, but can I can I watch porn on there? No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> No, hell no. <clears throat> and you're going to get Donnie Wahlberg to perform as you're going on tour? He's going to be your special guest? No, he, I don't know. Yeah, that's how, that's how I got to figure out in a couple of months. Like in a couple of months. A couple of, like a year and a half. Well, that would, be, that would be fantastic, pal. I hope it comes. I, th- I hope it happens for you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be. I can't wait. It's going to be fucking <clears throat> all. Uh, I just can't wait. It's all right. going to be phenomenal. It's going to be really good. All right. Well, make sure you let us know about June, and then uh, we'll we'll come see you. I'll definitely you come through. I'll bet you come on through. All right, sounds good, pal. All oh, right, I got a song for today. You gonna come up like this? Hell no, I don't think so. Today, do not come me up today, Mister Tony. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, sing us a song. Go ahead. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I got a song for you. Well, my name is DJ D from the place to be. I'm coming, come famous. I don't know what you guys are gonna do next because I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do, but I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Well, guess what? I'm gonna be famous. What are you guys are gonna do now? I don't know. No. Because guess what? I'm gonna have a lot of followers right now. I have three hundred, three hundred and ninety-one followers. Come on, follow me. My name is DJ to the Four. And you want to know? Come on, Billy. So I gotta say something now. You know what I say? What's up, homies? I gotta say now. What's, What's up? up, homies? Very nice, DJ G Love, and thanks for the update. And oh, uh, I got before I, before I leave, tell me I got <clears> a new thing now. Yeah. I ain't stuck. I ain't stuck with them. Well, guess what's gonna be now? Ah, oh, we're we're done with suckers. What's it gonna be? See you later, homies. See you later, homies. All right, sounds good. See you later, homies. Bye. DJ D Love checking in. I had the time to waste, so there you go. Um, words, says Brian Paul. Yes, uh, yes, Andy. I was just laughing as I couldn't repeat them. Um, <laughs> All right. So we, you know, we haven't talked to him in a while. And we're still waiting on Richie, so I figured I'll give him some time. Uh, and maybe we'll all go and have some fun at Jones Beach in June. Uh, hopefully we'll get the comedians on the boardwalk again this year at uh, Jones Beach. I hope we can make that happen. That would be fun. Uh, I, personally, I thought it was a s- success last year. <clears throat> Keegan and Fat Jay and Mario and Andy, Mary Capone, Michelle Fox, uh, Dan LaRocco did a set. You know, I, I we got, you know, a number of people up there, and I thought it went pretty well. So uh, it would be nice to be able to do that again. So, uh, all right. So what do we got going on here? <clears throat> um, big news uh, around here that uh, – <clears throat> big news around here, you know, well, across the whole country, it's been uh, it's been crazy – you know, weather-wise, you know, other parts of the country have been getting hit with storms and stuff. In our neck of the woods, um, <laughs> in our neck of the woods, they're saying that uh, tonight uh, we haven't gotten any snow. It's the end of February, and we got no snow this year. Supposedly tonight there's snow coming. They're saying that uh could be two to three inches. Uh, which is nothing, um, but it's really not. It's not terribly cold. So I personally think we're going to get snow, and of course there is. They're saying something about rain in there too. So <clears throat> I think by the time it's all, this is all supposed to happen overnight. It's supposed to start, I think, around six or something tonight, or maybe eight tonight or something. I bet you by the time we wake up, it'll almost all be gone. And we don't have to get up and worry about shoveling or anything. <clears throat> and then it's March in two days. So I, I don't think we're going to see any significant snow this year, which is okay by me. Snow doesn't really bother me too much. <clears throat> but I it's not like I'm sitting here waiting for it either. <clears throat> but I don't care when it does snow. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a pain in the ass when we get, when we get a lot of snow, like a foot or two, and, you know, and then it's, you got to work around it for a few days. But even then, it's just a few days. Who cares? That's the way I see it. You know, we don't have any big, giant ice storms, or when we do, it's rare. So, I don't know. That stuff doesn't really bother me. <clears throat> then we'll get 10 inches on Easter. Oh, oh, so you're having Andy and Bosi at your house there, Brian? 
<clears throat> Carol Miner. Oh, hi, hi, Carol. Major storms here last night turned into tornadoes when it made its way to, into Oklahoma. Oh, I didn't hear about that. <clears throat> um, wow, tornadoes. Are you okay? Everything good by you? Any major damage down there? I didn't hear anything about it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I hope everybody's all right down there. Uh, Carol, I, um, I'm just about done with everything you sent me, which makes me very sad. <clears throat> all good here. Oklahoma had some damage. Theater three has banned snow this year. I don't get it. That, there must be a Keegan reference, but I don't really get it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, but even, you know, but I like when it snows, you know, even when you get, we get a, you know, a few inches of snow around here, like everything shuts down. And I, you know what? Let it shut down for a day. Everybody sit and relax. That was one of the nice things about the, the quarantine. Like, you know, you just got to spend some time at home. Relax. I mean, not that I wanted to, but <clears throat> and not that I wanted to do it for all those months, but. Um, so, uh, all right. So, uh, <clears throat> we are waiting, awaiting the arrival of Richie Byrne. Great comedian. Uh, let's see. You can see him actually this week. You can see him at, uh, here at the Giggle Room here at Governors in Levittown this weekend. <clears throat> Brandon Lacaruba, Bridget Kavanaugh, Rob Hall, Devin Bramble, Aaron Berg, Richie Byrne, Emily Santosis, Nick Ginsburg, Kathy Arnold Jr., Luke Picconi, Mike Finio, Mike Finoya, Jeffrey Asmus. Those are just some of the names of some of the comedians you will see on a governor's stage this weekend. <clears throat> the main club here in Levittown, the Giggle Room here in Levittown, the Brokerage in Belmore, and McGuire's out in Bohemia. Four great stages, four great with many great comedians. It's going to be great. So go to govs.com and make some reservations. Check out their full schedule. Joey Cole is coming to the brokerage in March. Uh, uh, what's the one guy from I I from Finland? Ismo? He's coming, I think, in April. Uh, stop with the quarantine stuff. I think we did enough of that, Mr. I Killed Comedy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I really did. But, um, but I've been on stage several times since, and, uh, I I I I haven't killed anybody, so I'm very excited. I think whatever curse I was laying down has uh, finally been lifted. All right. So what do we got? So <clears throat> uh, a couple of stories as we're waiting for Richie. Um, <clears throat> did you guys hear about this um, this rapper? Uh, his real name is Matthew Griffith, but he's known as. Stanky, la stanky leg rapper, oh boy, Prince. <clears throat> now, I have no idea what I just said. Known as stanky leg rapper, boy, oh boy, Prince. So is stanky leg a group or something, and oh boy, Prince is just his name in the group? <clears throat> hey, Jeff, my staff, Michelle, said hello. Michelle's just saying hi to Jeff. She's not saying hi to me. You just summoned a demon. Yeah, I probably did. Stanky leg, oh boy, Prince. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, this guy, oh boy, Prince, Matthew Griffin, Matthew Griffin, Griffith. Um, uh, let's see. All right, I don't know what's going on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so apparently this guy, Matthew Griffith, was driving. I don't, uh, does it say where this was? He was headed to an interview with his girlfriend, Unique Music. That's his girlfriend's name. He was driving... Oh, Carol. He was driving in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex while driving in the far left lane of the freeway. Griffith said the brake pad of an 18-wheeler flew off and hit his car, went through the windshield, hit the dashboard, then striking Griffith in the face. In the face. Eddie Murphy, in the face. 
Uh, am I gassy today? Sorry. <clears throat> um, and then after it hit him in the face, it hit the child seat. His child was not in it. He had just dropped his son off somewhere. <clears throat> he had just dropped his, his son off somewhere. That would have been that would have been bad. His girlfriend. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. He was headed to an interview with. When it said headed to an interview with his girlfriend, I thought his girlfriend was doing the interview. He's heading to see her, but no, she was with him. They were both going together for an interview. So the girlfriend had to take control of the of the wheel from the passenger seat to avoid a collision, since the blow, since the brake pad knocked knocked. Um, Griffith unconscious. He regained. He eventually woke up. Immediately braked as music called nine one one. I guess that's sign language for one, <laughs> calling nine one one. Griffith was taken to an area by hospital. He stayed for five days. Had to have three surgeries to reconstruct his face and mouth. The impact fractured bones in his face and right eye socket. They had to put plates in his face and screws and wires in his jaw. <clears throat> and I don't have the picture, but he did post a picture. <clears throat> wow, that could really break someone's face, says the funniest Brian Paul. And that is why you are the funniest Brian Paul. Um, <clears throat> can I can't even imagine the pain. A, a, a brake pad to an 18-wheeler. I mean, the brake pad to a freaking <clears throat> a Mini Cooper would hurt. So, yeah, that's to me, that was just a crazy story, which is why I decided to share it. I thought that was nuts. Nuts, I say. <clears throat> um, all right, another story that we got here. Um, this, you remember last week I, was, I did the show by myself? What was that, last Tuesday? <clears throat> and I was running, running through some stories that I was holding on to for a while. <clears throat> well, here's, here's another one that I haven't had the chance to get to. This, I've been sitting on this for a week or two. <clears throat> there's this in Germany there's this nurse by the name of Mario who reported to work with a hangover it's cold in here sorry don't mind me it's cold in here and I have the heat on so I'm just I can't tell from here but I just want to make sure that it's on heat and not air conditioning or something because it's cold <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> So this guy, Mario, reported to work. Uh, and uh, Brian Paul, you'll identify with this. You're a nurse. Um, yeah, so this guy was hungover, and he wanted to rest. He didn't feel like working. So what he did to keep the patients at bay, he administered deadly drug mixtures to the patients. His head was pounding, and he had a sinking feeling in his stomach. Going to work with a hangover was the order of the day for German nurse Mario. This had deadly consequences for his patients. After a night of drinking, Mario, who works in the Munich Klinikum on the right side of the Izar, Andy would know what the hell I'm talking about, um, wanted to have his patients in peace and therefore injected them with deadly or life-threatening drug mixtures. Two people fell victim to his negligent way of working. I had a hangover, and my goal on duty was to be able to use my cell phone. That's the truth, said the nurse at the start of the trial, which started a couple weeks ago. Um, the accused is said to have drunk massive, amount, massive amounts of alcohol on a regular basis. For me, there were only two daily routines, celebrate or work. Wow. He is said to have drunk up to three bottles of vodka and 25 bottles of beer on a day off. As new, uh, he, is, is, he is said to have sometimes consumed a bottle of Jägermeister and 10 beers immediately after getting up. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Uh, not sure I appreciate that behavior. He's a lightweight. <laughs> so if you need a nurse, do not call Brian Paul. Um, yeah, so how's that for a crazy story? <clears throat> so, uh, all right, let me see what's going on here. I think... Oh, what happened there? Oh, okay. Uh, I thought, for some reason, I thought my show cut out. Let's see. I think it's Keegan and, and uh, Hirschman. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, oh, they're fighting. All right. Uh, well, here I here I go right now since since they're messaging with each other. Um, I'm going to tell them what Bosi said. Changing the subject. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, <clears throat> when Bosi uh, did Richie stand you up? <clears throat> I am starting to wonder. Well. He told me around 11.30. And like I said, he has to come in here anyway to record his show. <clears throat> so I don't know, maybe I'll stand them up. Stand me up, sons of bitches. I still haven't lost faith completely. I'm still hoping he's going to show. <laughs> yeah, he's he's probably with Jessica Kirsten right about now. Uh, yeah, I didn't even try to get Jessica. She came through here about a month ago on a Sunday. Uh, yeah, I didn't even bother. <clears throat> so, yeah, so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, when Boatsy called before, he said he made a reference to the Hershey and the Keegs banner uh, sitting in his work truck, his work van. So um, what that means, uh, it's got to be, what, a month at this point? Almost, almost a month. Uh, the Hershey and the Keegs banner. Um, we have, we have um, there's a fence behind the club. But there's a big parking lot that this fence runs along, so it's and the high school's back there, so it's a lot of traffic back there. So we, some of the shows hang banners for their shows. Good times, bad times has one. I have one. I'm on my my twentieth banner because you know, I go through co-hosts. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now it's just a banner with my face. For I can't go wrong, no matter how many people come in and out of here. Um. <clears throat> shows have had banners in the past year. We call it had a banner back there when his show was here. And some a lot of the former shows <clears throat> have had shows. There's a show just for the station itself. <clears throat> so Hershey and the Keegs banner disappeared. And it's not the first time. Unfortunately, the Wirt, they had a banner that disappeared. I don't want to say disappeared. I personally, when the Wirt banner disappeared, there was a storm <clears throat> that night. So I just personally think it ripped off and blew away. Um, I've had, you know, like I've had to, there's been plenty of times where a banner will like one of the corners comes off and it's just hanging there. Um, so it happened about a month ago. Hershey and the Keys banner had, was gone. I went looking around. I couldn't find it. The banner for the station itself was just laying on the ground. Uh, but it just didn't fly away. So it's happened. You know, banners have gotten beaten up. <clears throat> I've had to replace a few. Um, but Hershman, yeah, Hershman freaked. In fact, the last time we were recording Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling, it was the first time I'm recording them. Richie is in here. We have Rick Adana on Zoom. I'm trying to just, you know, get it done, work out kinks, because it's the first time I'm recording their show. And freaking Hirschman walks in. He was on his lunch break, and he was determined to search the area for his banner. So they're doing the show. I had to run out of here and, like, you know, get him in the hole. He's saying, hey, Mark, I'm recording. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, son of a bitch bastard. So, <clears throat> so he yeah he left, but he was still you know out there searching for it. He yeah he went nuts, claimed that he was doing a you know thorough investigation into this. Um, texted like, texted his daughter and like twenty of her friends that go to the high school back here. If anybody comes across the banner, or anybody hears anything like like I'm sure you know, in a high school. Teenagers, the big topic of the day is some. 40-year-old fat guy's banner. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he hasn't stopped talking about it since. And he's very upset. <clears throat> and um, so Boshi made a reference to it when he called in a few minutes ago. So, um, I don't know. Did Jeff take the banner? Because that's been a rumor. And even Hirschman said it himself, that he's, he's almost confident that somebody took it. Uh, changing the subject, Bosi called into my show today and said something about your banner being in his work truck. I tried to get more out of him, 
but he would not elaborate. <clears throat> what should I say from there? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Bosey work van? You mean bang bus? Oh, I don't even want to know, man. I don't even want to know. Don't mess with Bruce Banner. He might get angry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. I heard they just added five detectives to the task force. Should turn up soon. <laughs> uh, I don't know where Bosey is now. <clears throat> I know Mark was going to ask as he's dropping everything right now and running to his car to find Jeff. <clears throat> All right, so there you go. Oh, wait a minute. Uh. <clears throat> so, yes, yeah, so we're recording with, with Richie Byrne and, and Mark Riccadonna. <clears throat> and um, their guest, who I'm not going to say because I don't know if they want it out there yet, they've been texting all morning with the guest as we're getting ready to do their show. <clears throat> and so they've been texting, and Richie is texting with them. So I was hoping when I saw that he had texted, I thought I was hoping it was him saying, you know, be there in five, but uh, no. I tried to shut off my mic so I wouldn't cough into it, and I somehow shut it off and turned it right back on. Sorry. So, uh, all right. So, I didn't really have much more because I had a whole bunch of stuff for Richie Byrne. So, um, which, which, by the way, speaking of people who don't show up, um, a lot of us were worried last week when Hugh Murray didn't show up. Um, I mean, he's talked about it on here. You know, that he's, you know, had some issues in the past. <clears throat> so when he didn't show, a lot of us got a little concerned. But um, but it turned out he just, he was just sleeping. Uh, you guys know that from when he's been, on, been in here. He works nights. So for him to get up and do the show, he doesn't do it with much rest. To come in and do this show, he doesn't do it with much rest. And it's very appreciated. His time is very appreciated. But so I don't blame him. You know, last Tuesday, he I think he forgot to set his alarm, got home from work, and he just slept through the day. Totally fine. The guy's got to work. Uh, much more important than doing this show. I was just glad he was okay. I think he's coming tomorrow, I think, for Tuesday Trivia. Um, all right, so there was another uh, thing, another item. <clears throat> a list that I saw I saw the other day. If uh, here we go, okay. So <clears throat> it's a, a list of a, of the worst TV shows of all time. Now I was going to save this for another day, but oh wait a minute, wait a minute. <gasps> there he is. <laughs> what, what's the matter? You look mad. Oh, there he is. Now he's smiling. Are you on the air? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's asking where you are. Who's here? Uh, Bosey's watching, Andy Pajanos, Brian Paul. A bunch of people are watching. What's up, brother? How are you, man? Good to see you. Richie Byrne is here, ladies and gentlemen. Richie <laughs> Byrne. Come, come sit. This is the, the comfortable chair. I know you like that chair better. <clears throat> you know, if, if Rick Adana was doing the show, he would have done stand-up. He would have written three scripts. Done a movie or two. <laughs> all while he's yeah, all here. before he got here this morning. Yeah, 
We were talking. Guy's ridiculous. We were talking about. Oh, you don't have to wear those if you don't want to. Oh, really? Good. No, I my mic is on it. So and he's a massive alcoholic on top of it. Like, how does he do it all? I well, that's probably why. Good father, great <clears throat> husband, drinker, and a spy. And a <laughs> <laughs> and not many people. A bathing suit model. How many people know that about Mark? People don't want to know that about No one Mark. wants to know that. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you, brother? I'm good. This is. I thought you'd have other people here, so I got confused. I sometimes have other people, but no, I got Richie so Byrne. So you I don't sit and do the show by yourself? or do you... I try not to. I try, I, that I've be. been very fortunate that I get people in here almost every day. Almost. So you're here every day doing this? Uh, except Wednesday. I'm wow. here, yeah, Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, wow. and sometimes Saturday nights, like we did this yeah, past Saturday. Yeah, I saw you had Adam in. Yes, uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, I bet. He's great, man. I bet. That, that was, was Yeah, that was kind of like a big deal for us to get him in here. Yeah, that yeah. was great. You, yeah, Not you like must. this. Well, that was a big deal. This is just <laughs> Richie is... who lives down the street. <laughs> uh, you must have worked with Adam probably a Never. million times. Really? I swear, I mean, we know each other. <laughs> We probably did like an open mic somewhere back in the early '90s, sure. that, but we have never worked wow. together that I know of. Yeah, I'm isn't that weird? That is weird. C- million mutual friends. I mean, right, he's been right. on our podcast. He's mm-hmm. been, he was great on our podcast. <clears throat> right, and a great guy, but you know, we, and a tremendous comic. Oh yeah, man. But for some reason, we I remember we met a couple times. Like we, um, Joe Curry introduced us yep. here, actually. Oh, nice. And then I used to do a show here with Marion Groden. Oh. And he came on that show. And we were even talking about it then, how like we've known each other's names forever, but we've never worked That's together. That's weird. Yeah. What'd you do with Marion? She's great, too. She had a show for a little while on uh, iHeart Radio, and I was her oh. sidekick. It was really funny. Her dad is Charles Groden. Yeah. And, the, and he used to call in every week. Oh, nice. And, and I was like, but, and he never knew, and he was always drunk. Oh, and really? He, he would be, because uh, we did it uh, like six, seven o'clock at night. Right. So he'd be on like his second martini. <laughs> and he was in his 80s. And he'd call yeah. in and he never knew my name. He just knew it ended with an E. So he'd be like, what's up, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> every, and every week it was a different. What's up, Mookie? Uh, how are you, Billy? <laughs> yeah. And uh, like one week you would have thought right. he'd come out with Richie, but he never did. <laughs> And Matt, That's fantastic. I don't know how well you know Marion, but she's like, you know, she's devastatingly dry. And she's yeah. like, you know, he, this isn't a bit he really doesn't know, nor does he care. <laughs> That's great. So I, I I didn't even know she was in the studio. Like yeah. I had no idea. Early, I didn't know she early did Early on when we first, yeah, back a when long Mul, time ago. When Mul, Mulrooney started this Before thing. Mulrooney. Oh, be, they had, yeah. I thought Mulrooney was one of Maybe I'm wrong. Spell. No, I'm wrong about that. It wasn't oh, okay. Mulrooney. You're right. Yeah. Mulrooney was on in the morning. <clears throat> right, yeah. And then we were just doing once a week. Uh, uh, on a Wednesday, I think it was a Wednesday wow. night. Yeah, and it was funny because I got Vic DiBattista on the show. Okay, and the next thing I knew, I <laughs> I don't know what happened, but suddenly I wasn't doing the show anymore. But her and Vic were doing a show. And what the like, hell? What happened there, bitch? <laughs> Oh, well, have, one of these days I'll get if her on there and ask her. God, and you know she what? She did this. She actually I'll, did this show with I'll me once. I'll get that but. phone call, Marion. No, honey, that's not how it went. That's not what went on. You, <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> no, she loves me. <laughs> one time, I, she's so funny. I had lost weight and I ran into her at Gotham. <clears throat> and she goes, oh, wow, you lost weight. And I go, a little. And she goes, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Like that. Like yo, no, yeah, I got a long way to go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I gave you the compliment. Take the compliment. (laughs) (laughs) She kills me. She's yeah. She's very funny. She's very funny. She's she's you know, and that's actually one thing I was going to say to you that she's one of those people like yourself that are for some reason. You know, you guys should be household names, in my opinion. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, that hopefully good. after today. <clears throat> well, <laughs> this afternoon, you mean, not this. <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, you know, I was talking about it um, because, you know, you weren't here, so I had time to kill. So I was talking about <laughs> Well, you just said stop in. I didn't know you. <laughs> you have to be more specific, dude. Uh, I said 11 to 1230, and then you said I'll come in around 1130. But the last time I came here, you had another person here. So I thought, oh, he's got other guests. I what? didn't know. I don't... All you had to do is say, dude, I'm doing a show. Oh. Can you do the whole show? No, I'm just thrilled you're coming at all. I don't, I, I'm, you, you're Richie Byrne. I'm just happy to have you. I don't oh, care if it's 15 stop. minutes. Stop. I don't even remember. You were, you came in another time and somebody else was here? 
I don't, the last time, not to do your show, but oh. when, when Mark and I were the first <clears throat> two weeks ago. Oh, when Mark oh, and I oh were that do uh, Drake's show of storytelling. Right, right. I came in and you were doing your show, <clears throat> right? And you had said, "Hey, if you can get in early, stop in." But I couldn't, so I got right. in and you were just finishing up. So cool. I just took it for granted you had other guests. Well, that was why because you weren't coming, so I got other other people. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I was sit, literally sitting home going, "Is it almost noon?" <clears throat> <laughs> Maybe it'll be dumped by the time I fucking get that. <laughs> and the funny thing, I was going to stop at the deli and get a sandwich. Good thing I waited. Now, I was just, I was editing the drinks, jokes, and storytelling you guys uh, recorded in here a few weeks ago. And I started, you know, because, you know, uh, I, I have to edit after. It's not like it's live or I got to run right. stuff, you know. So I started recording nice and early. And I kept on, once you guys were done with the episode, it's still, it's still recorded for another five, ten minutes. And sure enough, at the end, you said, forget about the sandwich, because you said, and I have the video, you said that your gym is right here. Yes, it is. And I'm since you're going to be recording here, you're going to start going I'm to the gym. Sweats. Oh, look at that. You're I'm, in, I'm going right after this. I'm going over to the gym. Oh, you're going after. All yeah. right. So, all right, yeah. good. You so, don't want me going before. <laughs> you do not I like just it. thought you came from a mafia hit or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I kind of look like I did in that movie that Mark and I did. Yes. Except that that was green. <laughs> right. Which, which? Double nickel. Uh, double, double eagle. Double eagle. <laughs> Come see me. Gee, I wonder why my career is nowhere. Everybody's out there Googling double nickel. They I can't find me. You can find me a double nickel if you really look. And then they're just typing in dime. <laughs> They're just not finding it. 55? I'll try 55. <laughs> what the fuck's this guy talking um, about? <laughs> yeah, so the gym is right here. But okay. I, between this show and us, because we're going to shoot Shrinks, Jokes, and Storytelling at one. Right. And uh, and then, but in between, I got to, I'm starving. I, I haven't, <laughs> oh, I'm see, I was all proud of you. So Skip the sandwich and going to the gym. That's I'm going to go to the gym, but I have to get but something. The, can't the, but the sandwich from the cow is going to cancel out the gym. No, I'll be fine. You want, I brought... I got peanut butter sandwich. You want one? I don't want peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, that's. I came late and I'm stealing his lunch. <laughs> and he's regretting that he came at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. so, all right. So, one thing I wanted to ask you about. <clears throat> I had I had no idea. I just found out a few weeks ago that that you're a singer. Yes. As well as I know. can honestly say that again because <clears throat> I'm. Uh, I had stopped for a. I didn't stop, but. Once comedy took off, I really well, I, I I stopped doing a lot of theater, and but in the last ten years, I've seemed to be get getting well. The last five years, I'm really getting back into it. Oh, so. nice! And in the last two years, uh, a buddy of mine, a guy I went to high school with, called me, and he's working on a project, an original musical, and I'm in it. Oh, nice! Now, and he actually called me just to say, hey. We're working on this thing. It's a great idea. I can't really get into what it's about. I will as soon as I can. I, I'm dying to tell people about it. Yeah. Uh, he said, uh, "Can you, like, would you have an interest in seeing this?" And I said, "Yeah, absolutely." So we, they showcased it on Staten Island during the pandemic, at a, a, a restaurant in, in Staten Island, and we realized that they were just they didn't have a full script. They didn't have all the music done. It was two two friends of mine, and um, uh. Steve Baranski and and Joe Joe Trey and Steve and I went to high school together and Steve's a piano player really great talented piano player and he wrote this play they were in the middle of it and they realized well we're just going to be doing the music we're singing the music so we need someone to kind of explain what's going on so they asked me if I would do that so oh, I had okay. a, I read all of that as a and then a, about a year went by and um they wanted to showcase it again. They had done more work, and it was really good. And it's a great idea. And I, I, I shouldn't even be talking about it now because I can't talk about it. Right? You know? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that time they needed somebody to play a part, and they put me in. And it was so funny because the role is a minister, and the guy really should be about six foot two, dark hair, really handsome, and they got me. <laughs> so. <laughs> That kind of sucks, but when when we this is the good thing about being in a play at a because I've never done like ah, once before, but I've never done something where you can just go. Can we change this because it doesn't fit 
my voice. Right. So he had written it in this really low key, like really low. And I'm like, dude, and I'm like, Steve, I know you want it low because this is so funny. I go, I know you want the keys low because I get it. He's a he's a minister and you see him as this bass, right. this baritone. But I go, but and he goes, no, I I just write everything <laughs> in a low key. I could care less what key you do. <laughs> <laughs> like really, so we raised the key. Thank God, and and if and we raised it to my voice, which is okay. so cool. Yeah, because usually when you do a play, you know, you do West Side Story, you do Jesus Christ Superstar, whatever. It's already written. That's it. You're in. You're singing. So and you played the, Tony in West Side Story. No, did I did not. I played action. Oh, which, did you? Was the guy who did that? Uh, Officer Krupke. I don't know if you know the show. I do. It's ironic because on the Richie on the Richie Burns show. Oh my God, Marco, kill me. <laughs> on, <laughs> Who? Can we edit that? <laughs> Is this live? <laughs> you know, on my show, that that Mark Riccadonna comes on. Yeah, you know, he's just a sidekick. He does he's, it with Christy Miller. With you, he's just he's he just, kill me. he just sits there and laughs and smiles and nods. <laughs> anyway, on today on Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling, we have an old a guy I did theater with, uh, Doug Wilson, who's from Trading Spaces, the old TV show. <clears throat> right. And Doug and I are going to talk. I just watched Steven Spielberg's West Side Story over the weekend. Oh, I thought okay. it was brilliant. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's tremendous. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So it's funny that you said West Side Story. Uh, <clears throat> but I digress. But anyway, so we're doing... What was the point of the story? I have no idea. So <laughs> Steve said, hey... This is going on during the pandemic, and I've been playing this part, and I've been singing, and I've never been in better voice. And I, we did a showcase in the city about three months ago, and uh, one of my best friends showed up, who I've known since high school, too, and I said to him after the show, what do you think? And he goes, I think I've never, never heard you in better voice. Oh, like, and nice. I, I meant about the play. <clears throat> right, and he right. Was, and I'm like, he goes, Rich, holy crap, man. Nice. So that's good. And I think part of it is that because I didn't really sing I, sure. when I was for 20 years, you know? Right. Although I was in an off-Broadway show. This is a cool story. I was in an off-Broadway show in 98 um, called Bad Boy Johnny. That uh, It was a showcase, too, really. Not really off Broadway, but it was a showcase in the city. That, and I really thought this show was going somewhere. And when I had to do it, I was doing it in the middle of I, one day I had to do the Rosie O'Donnell show. I had to perform on the Rosie O'Donnell show. Oh, nice. And then they took me over to do my play. That was about the coolest moment <laughs> in my life. You know what I mean? A car picked me up in the morning, took me to NBC. Right. You know, 30 yep. Rock. Yep. I did Rosie O'Donnell's show. She mentioned the play on the air. Oh, and cool. then the car took me over downtown, and I did my play that night. I'm sitting there going, yeah, I made it. Did, was I Joey doing warm-up th that day? Joey for, did for, So you were like, yeah. hey, Joey look at me, no, Joey. Look no, at me. no, no, Joe, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Joey, uh, that's a story in itself, man. Joey was great. Uh, um, Joey is the warm-up king joey is the warm-up king and joey got me the job with dr oz show so i was going to ask you that yeah. i assumed that i didn't know that yeah. for a fact but yeah. yeah yeah matter of fact i was the last comic rosie ever had oh no kidding and, yeah before she went off the air and um <laughs> so fast forward like what that was 90 98 so let's say 12 years she comes on the dr oz show and she's, we're between, it's something you never want to have happen in front of Dr. Oz, by the way. So she's sitting next to Oz during the break, and she looks at me, and I go, Richie Byrne. Like, she, I go, I was Joey Cole's friend. She's right. So she goes, so I come down, and she goes, you did my show. I go, I was the last comic to do your show. And she looks at me and goes, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> Jeez. And Oz goes, Oz goes, I know, I know. I'm like, really? <laughs> I need. Wow! I'm getting berated for my weight by Rosie O'Donnell and Doctor. Still Oz. look in the mirror. So I just thought that was thanks, Rosie. Thanks. <laughs> Holy shit, that's crazy. So, but she used to come on Oz a lot, and she was always really nice to me. Joey is. He's told me that he, he's you know because she doesn't have the best of reputations Dude. or images, but Joey said he knows nobody that is more charitable than Rosie. She's amazing. Yeah, uh, and she's always been. I, I'll tell you a great story. I did the show. She had stopped using comics. She didn't want comics for like two, three years. She didn't do a comic. And she said, this is a daytime show, and I feel like 
the comics don't get there's a specific material I want it she was very so Joey Cola and um, uh, a producer um, went out and found her they said we're gonna find you comics okay and um, and they did and I was and after I did the show after I did my time she was supposed to say go see Richie Byrne at Dangerfields whatever she was gonna say instead she came over and she talked to me and she said you didn't you didn't expect me to do that did you I go no she goes, you know why I did it? I go, no. She said, because you're going to get more work when they see on the video. When you send this tape out, which she knew I was smart. Of course. She goes, you're going to get more work because I talked to you. It, it, and sure enough, every booker was like, wow. Wow, she gave wow. you a lot of time. Wow, she talked to you. Wow. She knew exactly what she was. And she said, you did my show. You did exactly what I asked for. And isn't that cool? That's I, very that cool. Was very cool. <clears throat> that makes me think and, of Carson right back in yeah, those days. Yeah, well, it was kind of like he called the couch. you over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Which car? You know, I mean, that was kind of her version of it. She, right. She didn't mean you're going to be a star, but she meant. And sure enough, every I started getting cruise ships that I couldn't get. I started getting uh, corporate gigs that I couldn't get. I started wow. getting. I mean, r resorts that I wasn't getting, and every one of them was. And it was too full to it because they were like, well. I, I'm like, I have the same exact act that I had six months ago, and now you're using me. And everybody, well, now you have a credit that really blows up. Right. You know, and I was like, that was, I mean, you know, I, I remember uh, a comic saying to me, you know, and when she was going off the air, a comic said, you know, you won't be able to use that credit anymore. Cause she, and, I, and he seemed happy about it. You know what I mean? No, I'm serious. And it yeah. kind of bothered. It was like, you know, he goes, oh, you're not going to get to use that credit anymore once she goes off the air. I'm like, well, why are you rooting against me? Exactly. Like, what, right. what have I done to you? <clears throat> right. You know, you could see that it bothered him, you know. But I, at least, I mean, you've been at it, uh, you know, a long time. You've been around these these hallways longer than me. But from, from what yeah, I've seen. Too long. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say how long. I but. used to sweep. No, <laughs> Fortunately, it doesn't seem I've been like here longer this. than the owners. That's true, actually, yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're old. Yes. Um, it doesn't seem like th there's too much of that. It seems like a lot of... You know, I take that back. The guys of your level, the big, the heavy hitters, the, you know, the Ferraris, the Burn, the Joey Colas, the Tim Gages, Chris Monty's, very supportive Guys, help each other out as much as you can. No, Monty's you, an asshole. Well, but, yeah, we know that, but <laughs> but he's smart about it. Um, uh, let me tell you, Chris Monty. Oh, please. So, for years now, I've been doing these daytime shows for seniors, where they bust the seniors in, they get lunch, they get a band. This guy, the guy who runs the band, that sets it up. He's got a his name's Mike Byrne, ironically. <clears throat> like oh, that's me. And he's he's got a great. It's a great gig. It really is. It's during the day. And the problem is, is these people are anywhere from 60, eh, 60 to, to 90. I mean, it, and they bust them in and, the, and you can go up twice. They won't even know. It's, <laughs> it's good. But you have to be careful what you say. And they're very, so they're always trying to bring in new acts and a lot of the acts fail. A lot of the acts fail. Oh, sure. So they had asked me, listen, do you have anybody? So I, I called Monty. Or Monty might have called me and said, hey, he had a guy out here in Long Island. Almost the same thing. It's daytime shows, seniors. A lot of guys can't do it. I think you could do it. I go, I'll tell you what. I got a guy. I said, you recommend me to your guy. I'll recommend you to my guy. He, All right. So, so I do. They bring in Monty. He kills. Kills. They yeah. love him. Monty has me call his guy. The guy goes, yeah, I'm retiring. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Now, now, let me t just say that that was about 15 years ago. Chris is still working more for these people than I am now. Like, they're always yeah. like, well, we call Monty. He can't do it. So can you? So, <laughs> I know he even goes down. Doesn't he go down to Florida and stuff, too, doing he, these? That's a different group. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, he but didn't you ask know, you to I go. Mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Monty. So, but what were you talking about? You were mentioned about Adam Ferrara, all the uh, established guys. Just how supportive uh, the you, you know, like the the, the the backstabbing and 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 not being happy for a guy. You know, for, uh, oh, was that mine? <laughs> Double nickels. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, screw it. Yeah, we get, we should talk about that. Tell us about. Well, wait, wait, no, no? let's go back. Well, all right, because I see that it's mostly it's mostly on a local level where because you know because there are it's mostly local guys who haven't made it to a certain level that they're the ones who get more jealous of each other. Where you guys, when you hit, I think, <clears throat> which to me is a little bit understandable, a little bit. I think there's a. I think there's a thing in this business which is completely normal where when you're younger and you're scared to death of, and, of where and I got to be honest Tony I didn't realize this till till Mark and I started doing drink jokes and storytelling cuz we'd have all these comics on who I knew at cuz Mark knows everybody oh, I mean, yeah. oh my god yeah I I don't know how he keeps he keeps in touch with everybody right and so all these comics were coming on who I knew but didn't know like like maybe we worked together in the 90s maybe but didn't really know them and they'd all say the same thing they were like oh richie Byrne, you were such a good guy i'm like oh, i didn't even think you knew who i was and they're like well you know i was just so worried about my own crap and that, like when you're five ten years in that's the you're just so focused on what you're trying to do yeah you sure. know yeah and the, and mm. things will come along and who gets this and who gets that? And you know what I mean? And who yeah. who gets their own show? Who gets Letterman? Who? And you sit there and you think, God, well, you're not jealous of them, but you feel like, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. or maybe. Sure. But you don't realize that you actually have things going on. Like if I look back at my career now, I go, oh, shit, I did that. I did that. I didn't, right. I didn't you know. And But there comes a point, and there are even guys, I'm not going to say names, but there are guys who I didn't like. At all. As a person or their act? Or both? both. Okay. <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> Definitely person. Sometimes it was whatever. But who, after about 15, 18 years in the business, you both realize, you, and maybe they didn't like me either, but you look at and you go, <clears throat> man, you've been at this a long time. I got to respect that. Absolutely. You know, and yep. I think that's what young people don't realize is you're in the business five, ten years. That's not a long time right. in, in this business. Right. It's really not. Yep. In another business, you're halfway to retirement. Yeah. I mean, think about that. And I, I think that that's, there, there comes a respect when you go, you got to the other side. You're actually a working comic. You have been for a very long time. Right. No matter what, <clears throat> I can respect that. Yep. And, and I think that that's what happens, you know. Uh, and I, I always tell, I remember once I was, and th this is years ago, a, a girl, a woman comic, a female comic, I don't remember who, and we're at Caroline's and they had the women's like Budweiser, women's of comp, women of comedy show, something like that down in Atlantic city. And this woman's sitting there bitching about who won, you know, I can't believe they gave it to her. I think it was like a $10,000 prize. Wow. You know? It was a big deal. And she said, I can't believe she won. But I go. You came in second? And she goes, what? I go, I do. you came in second in that contest? She goes, no. I go, then what do you care who won? Right. Right. It's not affecting you. Mm -hmm. It's not like you were this close. And it, what do you care? Don't worry about what other people are doing. Right. You know? Right. And that's the hardest <clears throat> thing to do. But it's, you know, and when someone gets it, this is the hardest. People do not. I love, you ever meet the people who go, I could have been a comic. Oh, or, yeah. Or I could have been an actor. That's my favorite. You know, I, I could have been an actor. But you're not. You know right. why? Because it's hard. It's yeah. not easy. So That's what drives me nuts. The people that don't consider it a real job. Right. Who, who think they can just jump right up. Right. Like my brother always used to say, and this is before I was doing, like, really working. Uh, my brother would go, if everybody could do it, they would be. Right. You know? And that's a great point. Yep. You know? And they, I think I think now in comedy, everybody can do it. Because every time you turn around, some Seven Eleven has an open mic. You know, every it's true. Like that's one of the things that's watered down comedy. When I started in comedy, when I even before I was good, if you said I'm a comic or I'm doing, people would go, "What?" Now, if you say people, "Yeah, my cousin's a comic," my bro, and you're like, "Yeah, but he's not." Right. There's a there's right. a level. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that that's the thing. Just because you got it, oh no, he's worked at Caroline's. Well, what day at Caroline's does he work? Right, right. Yeah, you know? yeah. If he's doing Monday nights, he's he's not a comic. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean that mean. It's just it's it's a. And once you get past that phase, now I can start respecting you. But you got to get past that phase. Right. And I and 
I love and they were, and you know what's funny because I've been at this so long, Tony. There's so many generations of younger comics, and you see that so, the, the the way that different generations act towards older comics. Like when I was younger, man, if if uh, if a comic walked in the room, like if Joey Cola, who he had won a contest in in Atlantic City and was on the radio with Mickey Dolenz, was used to host a show on right CBS uh, and. And I remember working with him going, oh, my God, I heard this guy today on the radio. Oh, my God. And now, like, people go, well, you know, <clears throat> you're not on a TV show. You're not. How many likes do you have? Well, then I, I can't respect right. you. It's not what it's about, man. Right. It's not what it's about. Some, some of these guys, I was talking to some of these younger comedians just like a month ago, and Jackie's name came up. They, I'll never forget it. One comedian knew who Jackie was but didn't know he was on Stern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, holy Dude, shit. It's been 20 years. And, right, but that's it. when that stuff sinks and in. that comedian's 25. He's a young guy. That's the thing. He was, he yeah, was he's not he even 25. Baby. Right. Yeah. So it's, but it's weird to me yeah. to think of it that way, you yeah. know? Yeah. <clears throat> but he still knew who he was. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, and that's a little weird to me because, you know, I'm I'm the same way. I, you know, I've known who Joey is for years, you know. And, you know, I... I was starstruck the first time I met him. Now he's my friend, right. and I've gotten past that. But the he first just, time I met he just plays that because he got a podcast. You're not his friend. <laughs> no, he doesn't come on he's here just anymore. A fucking user. He used to love Can me, I but uh, yeah, of course. No, B A B, they have him all the time. He's got he's <laughs> too busy for us. <laughs> I know. Every once in a while, when I was doing the Doctor Oz show, I'd be driving in and I'd put on the radio <clears> and <throat> Joey Cole is here. I'm like, click. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually feel bad because every time I see Joey now, first thing he says, "I'll come do your show soon." It's like Joey, I'm just coming to say hi, man. <laughs> you know I, why? Because he really feels guilty. Yeah, oh, he I really know he does. He's that good a he guy. Does. Yes, you know? absolutely. Uh, but you're right; he does do things like that. Right? <laughs> I just went. He did the Sopranos thing in, in Patchog. Oh, you went? I had. Um, Who's calling? It's, Who's calling when it's, I'm on the air? It's Hirschman. Do I take it? Yes. Yes. I had a feeling you'd be calling me. Is there something I need to know? I told you everything I know. Let, I got Richie Byrne here. Let, let me let me update him, okay? What's going on? So <clears throat> when we recorded her, uh, when we recorded um, uh, Drink Stokes and Storytelling, we haven't posted it yet, but you actually made a reference to Hershey and the Keegs and their sign on the fence. Right. And he came in that day and tried to find the sign. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing. I'm trying to record your show, and I run out of here because I'm, like, trying to hold him off from freaking out while you guys are recording. <laughs> and you said Hirsch is going to show up to try to find the <laughs> sign. So, so now this morning before you got here, Jeff Boshi called. He called in, and he said something about – he's in his work work truck. He said something about jerking off and using the banner to clean up. <laughs> so I said, well – D- d- Am I the only one who got hard from that? <laughs> <laughs> but I said, that, are, are you trying to tell me that you have the, actually have the banner? And he wouldn't say anything else. But, of course, I you know, had to stir things up, so I made sure to message Mark and, and tell him all, so all this. Mark, are you, so Mark's probably on his way here. That's my he guess. On, are you still on the well, phone? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? I mean, I'm just not laughing at any of it because it's not funny if he actually has the banner. But um, <laughs> what, my question is, well, me coming there wouldn't do anything. I mean, he's not there. He's not here, no. You could come yeah, and say no. hi to me. No, I mean, I, 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 I've scoured that parking lot literally at least ten times. See, it's like, it's like you're not even talking. You see that? Like You said what? you'd come say hi to me, and he's, nah. just, he's nah. so incensed him. right now with the banner. He's, he can't hear anything. It right is now. hard to believe, because Keegan's the most selfish son of a bitch I've ever met. <laughs> so how did they do a show together? Like it must be. I know you, but what about me? Is, that should be the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> should be. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> No, he's a good boy. <laughs> no, I already spoke to Mike. Mike's on a he's on a he's on a way to a gig. Yeah, but, he's going to Elmira. Um, I talked to that's funny. I had to talk to him too. I mean, listen, the bottom line is he might have just that might have just been a throwaway comment. From yeah, I don't think he has it. Where would he have found it? He maybe he's the one who ripped it off the fence. I, I don't know. Well, it was, no, the, the sign was definitely taken, and there's no question about it. The sign was we know for a fact it was taken because it was seen before it was seen on that Saturday night um, at Governor's, and then it was gone right after the show. So my question is, I think it was Vic DiBetetto that was there that night, and then there might have been a show in the in the um, giggle room, I'm assuming, as well. So I don't know if Bozy was there. I know Bozy's there a lot anyway, 
Um, but <laughs> him saying that he's wiping his, his jism on, it doesn't mean that he definitely is, or it just means that it's a prank that's gone on too long and he's got to give us back the sign. Right. Or maybe he's with the real Mike Keegan wiping his jism. <laughs> right. I would say that's probably... Sign. That's possible. That's possible. You know, Mike's lost some weight, so maybe he doesn't realize it's... <laughs> yeah. It's possible. So you, what, right? Now, can I ask you a question? Did did you yeah. pay for this sign? Is that is that why well, you're not, so upset? Not only did we, we pay a lot of money for the first sign, but I just paid out of my pocket for another sign. Me and Mike paid for another one last week that's arriving tomorrow or the next yeah. day. So, you know, then yeah. that's when that's when uh, when pranks become less funny all of a sudden. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, man. If it's a prank, that sucks. I you mean, know. a prank is great. If you if he has the sign, he's got to give it back. I mean, that's yeah. what it comes down to. It does look good but, in my basement. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll let. Well, I spoke to Mike. He's going to handle it. He's going to talk to Bozy today. Uh, and who knows? Maybe it was just a throwaway line. Tony, how how far into the podcast was the conversation with you and Bozy? <clears throat> it was. Uh... Pretty pretty early on. But enough on. about Richie Burr. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty early on. He he called uh, probably within the first twenty minutes or so, fifteen maybe. No, I got. Where do I? What is it on twat.com? How do I find it? Where is it? <laughs> We're live on Twitch right now, but it'll be up on YouTube. Twitch. It'll be on YouTube Twitch. immediately. Uh, uh, it'll be on YouTube this afternoon. Okay. So you can so you can see it then. And uh, this is on Twitch. This is on no, live on Twitch right now. Yeah. And then I did post. I watch it back on Twitch? Oh no! Yes, you, you, can. you can. Yes, but I'll if it's easier for you, it'll be on YouTube as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Have a good show with Richie. See you later, Richie Burns. <laughs> Goodbye, Mark. Bye. See, ya. See that? And then he got your name wrong. He called I you Richie know. Burns. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How many weeks with this friggin' side, dude? I mean, and I mean, can I ask a question? And I don't mean to belittle anybody, but does it really help? <clears throat> that much do people go oh i saw it on the back fence behind the, <laughs> behind Next the, the dumpster the, the, yeah the, oh my god i have to watch that show now it's a caricature of two fat guys <laughs> I mean, it, well it might help him his daughter goes to this high school so maybe his friend or her friends walk by and like, hey maybe they stole it that's what i said yeah i still think it's weather related he insists that it's not He's uh, very angry. Uh, God, he's yeah. an angry Jewish man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know, I'm going to get yelled at tomorrow you know. night when I have to do their show. But oh, you're doing it? Oh, you're I, working it? Yeah, yeah. So well, they never invite me on their show, so I don't really <clears throat> give a shit what they say. I've never been on their show. Really? That's a little weird. I've been I, on other Keegan shows, <clears throat> but yeah, because he's had a million. I think of it's them. Hirschman because I've never done a show with him. Hirschman, he he gets. You know, he's a big. He's a big um, fan of uh, the horses. And, uh, yes. Which yes, makes him a good friend of Chris Monty. See, it all goes yes. back to Monty, the, the evil that Monty is. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Right. He did an evil thing, and now this guy, too. He, we, uh, he had no, he had no, he didn't care, he could care less that you were here. He just wanted to talk about himself. So they belong together. No, I know. It was unbelievable. They can go have <laughs> yeah. each other. Hi, Richie Burner. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> He didn't even say hi, Richie. How about, no, he didn't. How about, uh, no, he didn't. He went right into it. Yeah. And how about the fact that he would want the sign back if Jeff did jizz on it? Like, he's okay? Like, oh, it didn't I didn't seem think to, of that. Yeah, it just dawned on me. Like, he's like, well, was he joking? Because if he is Tom jizzing on it, I want the sign back. <laughs> really? <laughs> Keep it, Jeff. I, Merry I, Christmas. I want the sign burned. <laughs> uh, and no other sign is gone. Well, see, that's the thing. When other times it's that there's been storms, other shows have lost their signs. Okay, I, I'm on my like 18th sign, but that's because um, that's because I keep losing. What's co-hosts. Petroni's show? Good times, bad times. Yeah, it's called. It? It's basically just just like this. You oh, just, I thought maybe it's like a rock based thing. Oh, uh, um, no, he has because he has long hair, and it's called Good Times, Bad Times. <laughs> it's well, the only reason I came he up with tr- that. He tried to use the the song for his theme song, and we it got, of course, got killed. Hey, did, got did you get my theme song? <clears throat> uh, I sent you guys the theme song two weeks ago. No. All right. <laughs> All right. No, I didn't get I'll it. I'll send it to you again after. This. But for for the pot for drink soaks. What video and all, or just no, just a song? Just the song, just the the audio, the uh, 
No, I no. don't think I don't think I saw that. No. You emailed it, you said, or was it on Facebook? I don't remember. Right. No, I think I emailed it to you and Mark. <clears throat> I really don't think I got it. Um, what's your email? Uh, I I think I gave you the Tony at knockemdeadcomedy.com. Not TV, Tony G. No, that's not you. No, that's not me. <laughs> Did you send it to that guy? Maybe. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Not me. <laughs> so, um, you hear my stomach growling? I did hear that. I wasn't going to say anything, but I did hear it. <laughs> Maybe I never hit send. because. <laughs> you might want to do that. <laughs> hold on, hold on. There's, there's, I will do it later. <laughs> this, we're, we're doing this is still who are we hirsch uh no, now it's bosey ah put him on <laughs> if he if he comes out he goes hey what's you, up, you, you, listen as far as uh i'm not going to be complaining like the hasidic that called before <laughs> so i i am very proud to ever be in the presence of richie byrne with the well, accolades and you said his and name right, too. He's a well talented actor, comedian. I, I, I can't say Porn too star. much about the singing because I have hearing problems because of it. But <laughs> nevertheless, I will not complain to ever be in the presence of such a man because uh, I'm Catholic and I don't care about a piece of plastic that <laughs> flies in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's the, well, you know... If you the, really were a good Catholic, you wouldn't be jerking off on it, but... Well, yeah, I mean, listen, if you're going to do it, do it on a Jew. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, and, wow. and and a very slender um, Irish kid uh, yes. named Keegan. Yeah, I told him he's not as cute now. <laughs> I go, you're the only guy I know who lost weight and got ugly. <laughs> <laughs> he was adorable when he was Well, yeah, I mean, about. I know you did kiss him on the lips when he was still oh, bigger. great lips. So I, I don't <laughs> want to take any time from, from, from Richie Byrne because he, no, is, he, is... he is a major he is a major guest on this show Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And he's, you know, I mean, like, listen, we, we don't need to talk about M. Ferrara and, you know, the Torah. So uh, <laughs> you guys have a great time, great well, wait, day. Well, wait, I got to know, did you take it? Did, did, did I? Listen, I... I'm over at Waste Management, and what better place to go ahead and hang such a sign at the moment? <laughs> so, uh, but I, I can't confirm or deny uh, of wow. my uh, possession of such a um, you know what's funny Hirsch, wonderful it, prestigious banner. It's almost like looking at one hundred three point five banner of garbage. <laughs> um, Hirsch, so, uh, he I'm is freaking you out right now. Hirsch is you have a losing great day, and, uh, yeah, take care. Thanks, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Wow, this is gonna get ugly. Yeah, her, you yeah, can Hirsch, feel it. Hirschman is freaking Hirsch out. Hirsch isn't finding this funny. Not at all. Keegan will think it's hysterical. Yes, Keegan will find this very. And funny. I do. I do. I find it funny. Right. It's just a banner. <laughs> <I do. laughs> and and let's come on. He's we spent a lot of money. It, the banners cost like seventy five bucks. It's not that. That's bad. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Keegan's got that. <laughs> he's my bookie. Believe me, he's got that. <laughs> And let me tell you too, the banner they did have, Hirschman, I'm I'm here one day, Hirschman drops it off, and it's freezing cold out there. He's like, you know, looking forward to, you know, you putting it up. And he's like, you can tell like he wants it done while he's here. I'm like, all right. I go out there. Sure enough, I go out there. He says, All right, I gotta go to work. I'll see you later. I'm looking forward to seeing it up. I'm like, all right, great. I'm freezing. My hands are getting numb as I'm trying to I get it done about, you know, fifteen minutes later, I'm freezing. I turn on there he is. Nice job, man. It looks great. I'm like, you motherfucker, you didn't even help me. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Oh, I was, I was you're gonna kill him. Seventy five dollars. We're we're crying over thirty seven fifty each. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, pretty much. That's what's going on wow. here. Wow. I mean, because it's funny because I was like, maybe Mark and I should get a sign, and he's like, oh, it's expensive. I'm like, oh, Mark and I aren't getting a sign. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, seventy five bucks. Well, at least that's what I've been and paying for mine. I need though. a new sign anyway, because now the Keegan looks like George Clooney. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> he looks like George's dead father. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So it is time for go to go. You got to eat before you. Uh, I'm starving. Just really quick, because you were doing. You you had this speaking of podcast, which I loved. I thought it was great. Dropping names. 
which I love. Yeah, it. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make that into an album. And it's funny ah. you're saying that because uh, our guest today, Doug Wilson, it, he was on Trading Spaces, which was a big show back uh, 20 years ago, and he wants to talk about all the different celebrities he worked with. Oh, and, okay. And I'm like, oh, dude, that's weird because I'm gonna do a thing. Mine's a little different because it's more about my quick in and out experiences right. with celebrities from. But well, yeah, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and make it into an album. I might even do like a a one night show where I, that's my whole act is about these different. Oh, that's you know, cool. I like Paul McCartney. Oh, you uh, met McCartney? Yeah, it's a great story. Really? Yeah. Um, Son of a bitch. Uh, uh, Richie Sambora is a good story. Elvis <clears throat> Costello is a great story. Oh, that. Oh. John McEnroe, like just cool little. You well, and, one. I mean, I watched a bunch of them, but there's the Valerie Bertinelli right? story. I loved. Oh, the Valerie Bertinelli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, love yeah. that. One. I I got a. I met Eddie Van Halen. Oh, once. see, yeah, we were doing <clears throat> it right. We were making little snippets of it right. on Facebook, and I want to get back to that because I I thought it looked really good. A friend of mine was doing that. Yeah, I and I have it. to call him and, and maybe try and set up a bunch more and put them on. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Uh, all right. So, uh, RichieBurn.com is not... No, it's gone. All right. There's so no way... There's a reason Facebook. I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Facebook, Richie Burn, B-Y-R-N-E. There's no S. Like, the Jews use an S. <laughs> <laughs> they can see you this weekend, this Saturday in the Giggle Room. I'm going to be Saturday night... Oh, yeah. Yeah, this Saturday <laughs> in the Giggle Room here at Governor's... But I'm also <laughs> doing the Smithtown Theater on oh. with uh, with Gage and Pat O'Rourke on on oh. March 18th. That's a great so show. It's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be like an Irish show. Gage on, was here Saturday. He was he was pushing it. Oh, he was. He oh, was good. Yep. Good. Yeah. So Love Smithtown, Gage. Smithtown Theater, March 18th. That's a big. Yeah, I want to kill um, uh, Gage. No, uh, I just blanked on a name, and you have it here. Uh, what's her name? It's running the show. Uh, why did I just blank on her name? Kathy Arnold? Kathy Arnold. Because I don't know where uh, I got that from. Kathy Arnold calls me, sends me a Facebook message. She goes, can you do blah, blah, blah? And I, I I hadn't even seen it. Like It was like, and 10 minutes later she writes, I guess not. Like, Take it easy, take, Kathy. Calm down, Whoa. Kathy. So I had nothing. And, you know, it's the little room. And so I write, yeah, I'll do it. Now, meanwhile, I'm booked to do Smithtown Theater. I'm trying to get all my people to go there. She's running around my neighborhood telling everyone, come on, come on, March 4th. I'm like, no, no, I need them to come March 18th to Smithtown. So That's thanks, right. Kathy. Jeez. Yeah. She's got some nerve promoting her show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull down her sign. <laughs> Uh, and Double Eagle, can they? Is that available yet, or what's going on I don't with that? Know. All right. Well, that's a movie that he made. It's fantastic. Double Eagle. And very soon, I'm going to be doing this play. Uh, we'll talk more about. But the, oh, Come I didn't tell you tell the us, best we. part about this play is my other friend who was writing the lyrics uh, got busy with other things, and he's he. I started writing some lyrics, oh. now, and I've never. And it, I'm actually really excited about that and nervous because, yeah. you know, I want to see if it is. So I've been writing a couple of songs with my friend Steve. Oh, look at this. you. Yeah, yeah. I've never done that before. And I, he seems to be, everyone who's seen it seems to be happy with it. So nice. we'll see what I, I actually read lyrics that I wrote to Keegan. I go, dude, is this any good? And I read the lyrics and he goes, I have never wanted anyone more. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, really? The lyrics are that good? He goes, what lyrics? <laughs> What what makes you write lyrics and say, "Let me pass this by Keegan"? I don't I don't know <laughs> I don't know. You're right. I don't know. He was there, and I w I'm very insecure about this. Obviously, uh, yeah, and, I can understand that. And yeah. I just looked up. I go, "Can you listen to this? Tell me." And I had to explain the background of the song and why, because it's you know. And he goes, "Yeah." So I read, and he was like, <laughs> "But he he was going, no, I'm not kidding. That's really good." And oh, so good. I'm like, all right, good, good. Very you know. nice. Oh, yeah. that's great. I'm excited for you, man. Yeah, man. We'll see. Acting, singing, writing. Oh, this is Yeah, good I'm like stuff. the Mark Riccadonna of <laughs> Long Island. <laughs> of the unpaid jobs. <laughs> this was fun. I'm glad you made it, man. Me too. All right, we're out of here. Uh, what's tonight? Steve Squared at 630 uh, on the YouTube channel. The Work with Mike, Pete, and Steve, that's at 8 o'clock on the YouTube channel. And then we're back here tomorrow. I think Hugh Murray's coming in, I think. Um, <laughs> but at least we know he's safe if he doesn't come in. All right, we'll see you guys. We hope. We hope. We always hope. I love you. <laughs> oh, he's fantastic. All right, we're out of here. See you guys later.